Welcome to video 15 in a series of introductory videos for InventorCam. This video's topic is a new mill turn or turning project. So um, this will be similar to what we saw with video three on the milling side. This time it's just gonna be for turning and for the mill turn module. So let's take a look at how we get into that. So we're gonna go to InventorCam, new, and from these modules, you can choose what you're gonna work on. In this case, we're gonna do some turning operations. So we need to set up a turning module. Uh, turning module and mill turn module, they are essentially the same. They'll both let you add turning tool paths, but mill turn will let you add uh, different functions in terms of setup. So it is designed to do milling and turning tool paths. So it gives you the ability to add multiple offsets and such. Um, if you're gonna do turning, just turning, then still use the Milter module and then just choose a post processor tailored to just turning. So um, always choose the Milter module, no matter if you're going to do turning or on a Milter machine. Okay, and similar to what we saw in video three, we start with a name for our external file and it takes the name of the inventor cam file and if this file is already existing in the directory then it just kind of adds a dash one or a dash two depending on how many files share the same name i could save this anywhere i want by checking this box it actually saves it in the same location as i got it uh where i got it from in terms of the inventor part file but if i uncheck this box then it just saves it to wherever location I browse to. Now, by default, the, the location is the one that we set up in video one, in the global settings. Camp part model is just giving me the address of where that invent, the original inventor part was kept. And then I could choose my units for measurements and fees and speeds and such. So I'll just click the green check mark. So a lot of this is gonna be the same as what we saw in video three, because we're still just setting up the part for use inside of inventor cam. So the first thing we do is choose our post processor. Again, the software comes with a couple of trial and training post processors just to get you going, just to get uh, training, uh, especially after seeing these videos. But it's definitely best to get a post tailor-made to your machine. So contact our post department and get a post made specifically to your machine. On the lathe side, uh, it depends on your machine, but sometimes the default posts are okay. Now on the mill turn side, that is a much more complex machine. So you definitely want to contact the post team and get your post processor made, tailor made to your machine. In this case, I'm just gonna go with the DMU. Coordinate system. So similar again to what we saw in video three for the milling side, we have the same options. So for a rundown of these guys, just uh, uh, review video three uh, and you can go through these. Now specifically, I'm just gonna use this, this select face and in terms of uh, place coordinate system, I'm gonna use the center of revolution face. So if this was a milling part, we would choose a top face and we would do something like top corner, top center, whatnot. Because this is turning, we're gonna have these revolved faces. If I click on center of revolution face, what that'll do is it'll place the Z axis dead center of that revolved face. So the Z axis now acts as the rotary axis for this part, for this machine. And Z equals zero is the top face of one side of the part. Now, if I don't want to turn that side first, I want to turn the other side, I can just click on change to opposite and it faces the other direction. Your Z axis is your tool axis, especially in turning. So I want the Z to point outwards from where I want the tool to come from. So in this case, I intend to turn this face first. So we're going to just have Z pointing positive to the right. In addition to that, it is somewhat of a rule of thumb, but what I like to do is I like to have my x-axis, which is usually up in a machine, uh, I like to have that pointing at a feature so I can relocate the part. In this case, there is a keyway in this part, so I'm just gonna do a flip around Z until I get the x pointing at that keyway. Um, if this was a flat, this eliminates the need to index to that, that, that angle to do the flat. If the flat is on the very top of the part in this setup, then I, I reduce the amount of rotations I need to get to, the amount of indexing I need to get to to get that particular feature. So now that we're good there, I'll click on the green check mark. And if you recall, I left some of my automatic settings turned on. So what this is actually gonna do is it's gonna take the part and build some of those profiles. In the turning operations, we actually use these profiles as our geometry. So that's one major difference between the turning toolpaths and the milling toolpaths. How those profiles were developed, 
we're going to take a look at real quick here. So you can always go back to your automatic settings, the ones that we reviewed in video one, and turn some of these features off. So instead of automatically selecting the target and the stock, I would go in here and manually do it. We're going to take a look at how the stock can be defined. And again, similar to what we saw in video three, we have many options in here. To review what each one does, you can review video three. Now, in, in the case of turning, however, we have revolved around, revolved boundary around Z, and we have the same one we had in milling, which was the cylinder. I'm using the cylinder here where I'm defining a OD, an ID, and a length of a cylinder around the part, either relative to the model or absolute coordinates. Basically, incremental or absolute uh, settings. All you're really doing is just giving it an idea as to what stock you're machining with. In this case, I have on the positive Z side on the front face, about 50 thou. On the negative side, I'm adding an inch on the back side. And then radially, I've added 100 thou. The reason I want to add some material on the front is even if I'm going to face this part, the turning toolpaths in AdventureCam need to see some material to be removed. All the toolpaths are driven by the updated stock. So if I left that at zero and I had a flat face there, I wouldn't really be able to add any turning toolpaths on the front face because there's no material to be removed. So updated stock is exactly how these toolpaths work. Now, in terms of the target, similar to what we saw on the milling side, you just click on the solid and that's it. It understands that at the end of the toolpaths, that's what you want the part to look like. But in turning, because it works off of the turn profile, we actually can give it two types of profile. One is the envelope, which is what we just saw. It is just the top half on the X, uh, XZ positive side, just the top half of the part, because as this thing is spinning, let's just get a side view, as this thing is spinning, we only care about working on this one side. It spins, it'll machine that side at the same time, so no problem. And you have two ways to develop that envelope, speed before accuracy or accuracy before speed. Essentially, that just goes into how the profile was made. I can get this thing to uh, parse the model, so it spins it around the Z-axis, gets the outside envelope and develops that. And if I wanted to just do a, a quick calculation, then it just does it quick. If I want to be more accurate, so this is a matter of data points, a matter of, of the accuracy of the profile, I can click on accuracy before speed, and we actually get a similar profile, but it'll be actually right down to the, um, to the fine points of the outside face of the part. If I click on section, it is literally a cross section of the XZ plane. So that would give me a profile on the top and the bottom. That's useful if, if your part is a very complex part and you don't exactly want to get all the, um, you don't want to sit there as it parses the model. Maybe you have it set to um, accuracy before speed, anything like that. If you ever need to get just a cross section or you have a upper turret, lower turret, and you want to have some geometry to work with on the bottom side, you can use the section and it'll give you a cross section of the part. But in this case, we will be working with just those two profiles like that. And I actually like to rotate this just a bit so we can see the profiles a little better. Okay. So click the green check mark to accept those two profiles. Those are the geometries we're gonna use in our, our toolpath. Now, as it spins around the Z-axis to get that profile, you can see that it actually ignored the keyway. So again, it's just the internal and external envelope uh, as the part spins around. Machine setup is always required. Um, in the milling side, sometimes it's, uh, depending on your post, is not really required, but for turning, it is definitely required. So you wanna add a machine setup. You can get this to be done automatically by your inventor can settings. I have done that here. And you just tie it into whatever corner system you're working on. Now, if you have a main spindle and a sub spindle, then you'll have a second section here that's talking about the sub spindle, and you can set up your corner system for the sub spindle as well. This is more of a mill turn thing. Um, there's a little checkbox here that says stock in. So if I had a main and a sub, I could use the machine setup to tell InventureCam which spindle is holding the piece. Now, if we go back to the table clamping, this is where we actually can add our fixture. Now, you have the ability to add fixtures in the milling side, and that's actually covered in a separate uh, YouTube channel video that we have. But for turning, uh, you don't necessarily have to add fixtures. You can just add none, or you can browse to your other fixture. What you're really doing here is just telling it where the clamping is on this part. Now, let's just go ahead and edit this so you can see. So let's say we made our fixture here. Kind of fixture two, we'll just call it. You have three ways to define the fixture. You can either use standard, user-defined, or 3D model. 
Standard is this option here. You define a three-step chuck. You define where on the chuck it's being held. You define the clamping diameter. So in this case, it takes the, the default diameter of the outer diameter of the stock. You can see it's there. But if I highlight that number, I can click on any piece of geometry and it lowers it down to that diameter. Now in this case, let me just kind of redo that back to that line. The height of the of each jaw and the width of each jaw is controlled here. So let's say we go and we expand these a little bit. I'm going to just make each one of these three, and then each one of these one, just so we can get a big representation of the jaws. And then if we continue down, you can see that you actually can give it a thickness. So that profile can be thickened and then number of jaws themselves. So when you take a look at this inside your, your simulation, you'll actually see the jaws holding onto the part. Other ways to define your jaws are with the user defined. So you would actually use an inventor sketch and then give that some thickness. So that's if you're using soft jaws or whatnot, you can just design them ahead of time in inventor and then bring them in here. If you have a solid model, you can use a 3D model option and it's similar to what we see on the milling side. You can actually just tell it to select a solid and then use that as your fixture. That's useful if you have a, a set of jaws and a tailstock. That way you can have them all in one selection. So let's say that is my fixture there. I'm just going to go and click uh, camping, uh, clamping fixture number two. If I click on this icon here, I can see how all of that fits together. So my part is actually sitting inside of the jaws right now, inside of the face. So what I need to do is just move these things out. So first, let's talk about where the jaws are sitting. If I just highlight this and using the wheel on my mouse or typing it in, we can see that I'm moving it a little forward. Now this thing is recessed into the part. I'm just going to bring it over here. Perfect. Okay, so that might be too far. So let me just put it to something like 30. Okay, so that is where the jaws sit relative to the face of my machine. Now I need to tell it where my part is sitting relative to the jaws. So the axial position as we saw in the, uh, the setup was that point right there on the jaws. So that point right there is sitting basically on Z equals zero. I need to move that up. So again, I can go into the Z and either use my wheel mouse, my mouse and my wheel to kind of move that back and forth. I can type in a number or I can click on this and actually select it from the solid. So in this case, I'm gonna do some turning on this side. I probably wanna go and hold it close to maybe the back end of the part or back end of the stock. Let's say back end of the stock. So we'll click on that Z coordinate. So now my stock is sitting right at the tip and then I'll just recess this a little bit. Let's say we're holding it 3.5. So I'm holding it by half inch. Now in reality, this is probably bar stock. I'm probably holding it by much. I'm just trying to give it something on the outside there. So that's how it sits on the machine. And I'm ready to add my, uh, my turning tool paths. Any questions of this or anything else from Inventor Cam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this introductory channel. Thanks for watching.